I don't know if, if anybody knows anyone who is, if, if anyone knows anyone who's supposed to be here right now. If not, then we'll go ahead and get started. <clears throat> so like I said, the schedule, well, well, well first off, go ahead and let everybody know that uh, Adam's not going to be here today. Uh, so uh, this might go a lot quicker than usual, just because we usually go half and half on talking. But I'm going to try to explain as much as I can by myself uh, and go through it pretty smoothly. I usually have to get straight to the point. Adam usually has a lot more examples and things of that nature. But if there's any questions, you know, type them in and I'll try to respond to them and try to elaborate on some things if it's not clear enough. But, uh, but so, this, so the schedule for today is, if you've sort of seen the PowerPoint, we started off by just giving you a crash course into uh, 3D massing. And, uh, and so from there, I'm going to try to use those same skills we learned, you know, in the previous class and use them here to actually take a sketch, import it, you know, mass out some masses, you know, play around with it, and then take one of those facades or faces and turn it into a uh, divided surface, which I mentioned at the last class, but we didn't really go into completely. We're going to take one of those sides, make a divided surface out of it, and then we're going to... Uh, actually create a component to go inside that that divided surface so not too advanced but we will create you know just a standard component to put in there and uh, give you a little taste of how that works and how to create those type of families so let's go ahead and get started here so we're gonna start with a sketch I have some sketches on my computer I'm gonna bring in here so let me just show you how to import a sketch I'm gonna use that to a mass off of but just to explain sort of the differences between an imported sketch versus in, an imported CAD file. If you just go to your insert tab, top left, I'm going to go ahead and click that. You'll see you have import CAD. You also have your image and insert from file. You see that's actually grayed out right now, and that's because that's one of the differences between an image and a CAD file. Images can only be placed in those orthogonal views I mentioned earlier. You know your your level one, your north and south elevations and those actually won't be visible when you go to a 3D view. Now on the contrary, uh, a CAD file, if you, if you import it, you can actually see it in all of your views. So you could place one at this level, then you can place one at another level, and place one at in section and one in plan. And you can sort of compare and contrast those different CAD files to get a pretty accurate representation of your building before you mass it out. So that's one advantage with a CAD file, because many times that you're at your initial phases, you're not going to really have CAD files. You're going to have sketches, so those can still be used. It's just that you have to know that your limits with them are in orthogonal views. So I have some really rough, <laughs> crappy-looking CAD files that I'm going to bring in here, and then I have an image file. So let's go ahead and bring those in. I'm going to walk you through that. I'm going to go to insert again. It's going to insert. I'm going to go to actually to my level one first, so that I can bring in bring in that uh that actual sketch at level one. So double click that view. You'll see it darkens it into bold when I'm actually on that view. And I'm going to go to, and now you see your image actually comes up. So I'm going to click that. Once again, I'm, I'm just in the generic conceptual mask uh, interface we played in last time, in case you didn't uh, notice. And it says the important image will not be visible in projects. To improve performance, delete the image before saving the family. That's just saying before you export your your project into actual project, or sorry, <laughs> your conceptual mass into actual project, the image will not be visible. So there's really no no point of having it in the file. It just sort of bulks up the the image size, and it's not really necessary. So typically, you're going to want to delete your CAD files and all your imports before you actually bring that that mass into you know the actual project. But we'll go over that later. Let me just close that up. I'm going to open up my sketch. If I'm going too fast or anything, just let me know. I tend to talk fast, so I'm trying to be slow. Anyway, so let's open up this sketch I have on the desktop here. Sketch. Open. And you'll see it bring up these crosshairs, and you can start to position it where you want to. So I'm just going to put it center to center, if I could here. Let's place it. This is that same sketch you saw in the earlier PowerPoint. Now once it's placed, we can start to sort of see what scale this is at. Um, by sort of placing a line. So I'll just go to line up here on your drawing tools. Let's go to go to line. Just going to click somewhere and just choose a reference point. 
And you can see here that this wall is about 24 or 25 feet. I'm not sure exactly what scale this should be at, so I'm just going to sort of go relatively here and change this from 25 to 30, just to make it a little bit bigger. And in order to do that, I'm going to go over scaling real quick. So let's go ahead and escape out of that. Now to scale something, oftentimes you have to first select what you want to scale. So I'm going to select the image here. You see it come up in the purple border. I'm just going to click that. So now it's selected. I'm going to go to my scale, which is at the top under inside your modify tab. So let's go to scale. The shortcut is RE. But let's click that scale. And now you can choose two reference points. The way scaling works in Revit, it's a uniform scale, and what you do is you can either choose two points, or you can do it sort of by an exact dimension. You can do numerical, as you see here in your your active uh, your your bar that changes depending on your tool, your tool options bar. You see it has a scale factor of two. I can do that either numerical or graphical. I'll, I'll just do graphical. And graphical means I'm just going to choose two points here. So I'm going to zoom in some. I'm going to say this corner this corner here, it's not very accurate, but this corner to this corner here should not be 22. So I'll click first point, second point, and right now it's 22 feet, and now I'm going to just, I can easily stretch it out and you'll see it expand, or I can type in exactly what I want. So I want it from 22 to actually be, I'm going to type in 30 feet, so 30, enter. And now if I choose a line again and check that, I do not want to save and just click there and there it looks like it's about 30 feet so it scaled it correctly alright so now that that's scaled we can use it to start masking out some some objects just to show you the CAD imports before I go into masking it masking this out if I go to 3D now the little house at the top get you a shortcut to 3D view oh, you see that you can't see the, the image file it's only visible in that one level floor plan so, but let me bring in a CAD file now. So let me go to insert the same way. So this time I'm going to say import CAD. <clears throat> I'm going to scroll down here to there's a planner section. Uh, let me open up the plan first. And they have some options here: center to center, place at what level. If there's more levels, I could choose a different level. And I could say to invert the colors or keep them the same. I can invert just cer just certain layers versus all of them and then the units, which I usually say auto-detect, and it'll bring it in full scale, the same as it is in the in the project. So I'm just going to say open. Bring that in. And if it doesn't crash, we should be good to go. Alright, so I just placed it on level 1, center to center. And you can actually see this one in 3D, which is very nice. So if I want it, I'm just going to create another level here real quick. If you remember how we did it last time, you can just select the level, hold down control, click and drag it up, and we got a second floor. We're going to add one more while we're here. Why not? Not so high, though. All right. Let me rename these since I put level 3 actually below level, below level 2. Let me change this one to LVL2. But you can do that simply by clicking the level and then clicking the name of it then you can change that to whatever you want. So let me just change these. <coughs> yes. As you change it here, it will change the floor plan to your left as well. That's what it just asked me about. So let me change this to... All right, so anyway. So let me import that same thing again and just put it on level two just so we can start to see some, some more layers here. All right, import. This time, crap, I can't say that. I need to actually create another level. So I can put that on that one. Let's bring in this section now. Screw the other level. There's no time. Insert import CAD. First, let's actually go to uh, the north elevation so that we can place it on this level instead of in 3D. Because we want this section to be sort of right side up, not flat like the plan is. So let's go to our north elevation first. And now let's import the CAD section. All right, 
right, so there's that. Probably should put it on the OS. Now if we go to 3D, we can see <laughs> they're definitely out of scale here. And it's actually going the opposite way of what I wanted to. I know that's right. I made these up kind of randomly, so I'm just going to try to make these work. <laughs> All right, now let me resize this one just want to match the one we have down here. Let's resize this one to be 30 feet, just like the other one was. So if I select it first, go to scale, and I choose two points. And tell it to be 30. And scale that one up. There's the other one we brought in. Delete that one. And then let's tell this one, resize. It's kind of hard to do some of this when you're in 3D. It's better to go to the actual plan itself. So let me go north, select it. Oh, let me resize this for some reason. It's weird. Huh, I don't know. Won't allow me to resize this one for some reason. Alright, screw it. Moving right along. Let's just delete this one so you screw it. All right, let me slow down some here. See, I'm going too fast. So let's lose this. Ma let's use this mass here to actually mass out some of these shapes. So using my drawing tools, if you go here and you see your green, the one that has green, called pick lines. You can actually select lines that are already on the drawing instead of actually drawing them yourself. So I'm going to say pick lines. I'm just going to select all these lines here. If I hit the tab key while I'm hovering over one line. It'll cycle through my selections and actually select the whole loop of lines. Which makes it a lot faster. <laughs> so I can just select all these. Tab and select all those. And then I'll tab and select all these. So now I have lines on all these different faces. And using what we learned last class, we can just select these this loop of lines and then go to our Create Form tool. just sort of start to mask these up. They're not really very accurate because it's just a sketch, so it's just a masking study. So I'm just going to relatively move these. Might be going too fast. forgot about that. So, but really what I'm doing is just taking these loops of lines and then extruding them up with the Create Form tool. As you see here, this one didn't, did not turn into an extrusion. The reason that happened was because the lines were not actually one closed loop. If you look really closely, you can see a gap between these two. So what I need to do is, I'm just going to undo that with Control Z. And then I'm going to connect these lines together. As you can tell, they're, they're broken up right here. So I'm just going to select the lines, so I'm going to click this point and just drag it to the end here. Until it snaps. So it becomes a closed loop. And then I'm going to extrude it up with the create form. And I'm just going to bring this down a little bit. And I'm going to do the same with this last cube here. Select it, and then just go to create form. This one has the same problem. So I'm just going to undo that. I'm going to select this mass. I'm going to hide it, the glasses down here, so that I can see the lines below it. Using the glasses at the bottom of the screen, you can go to hide element. So I can hide that real quick. Then I can zoom in here and actually connect these two points. And now I can say create form. So the question is, is there a quick way to match heights of these forms? Well, when you're extruding it, you can tell exactly what height you want it to be at. And, or you can either, while you're pushing it up or down, it'll snap to, to other surfaces, like you see here. If I drag it to this point, it turns the other one purple, which means I'm snapping to the same height as the other mass. 
So if you wanted these all to be the same height, you could just keep moving them until it snaps to one of the faces of the other ones. If that makes any sense. So there you go. See it snaps and then it turns purple. Of course, I don't want these all to be the same height, so. Also, you can just select the face and then type in what height you want beside it. But they all default to, I believe, about 10 feet when you extrude it at the very beginning. Well, let me change these to different heights. I don't want them all to be the same. Let's bring this one down a little bit. So this is really where you would start, sort of just playing with, with, with your masses using that initial sketch or, or CAD drawing to sort of start off but then sort of manipulate them to look the way you want them to. So now I'm going to just unhide that last mass I just hid. If you look at the screen you can see sort of a, a turquoise border, I don't know what color that is, or cyan blue, something like that, around the screen. That means you have something hidden. So now I'm going to go down to my glasses at the bottom and I'm going to say reset temporary hide and isolate. And that will bring that one back. Now if we go back to our level 1, we can see that sketch we brought in earlier. We can sort of see how this matches up with that sketch, which is completely different, but... <laughs> we could have also used this, this sort of sketch here to sort of mask things out just by using our drawing tool. Of course, with, a, with an image file, you can't snap to anything, so you would have to sort of relatively draw, you know, all these different masses. Like so. Which doesn't have to be very accurate because you are just in exceptional design phase, so a lot of these aren't 100% accurate anyway. We could have just easily did it this way. Created those, snaps of those, and then went to our 3D view, and then selected those lines and extruded them up. But anyway, we're not going to use those. We're going to use the other ones. So. All right. So now we have this. I'm going to start to manipulate this a little bit more to make it look a little bit cooler, I guess, because it's not very interesting right now. I'm going to take some of these edges and just sort of make things look a little bit more interesting. If there's any other questions, just let me know while I'm just sort of playing with this. I kind of want all these to touch into that center sort of datum line. This one has to come across, I suppose. Just to go over uh, hiding again, this question about hiding. To hide something, the quick way to do it would be to select it. And the way you select it is, don't, don't just select the face, you have to select the whole mass. And again, using your tab command, you can cycle through different selections. So I'm going to hit the, I'm going to select one face and I'm going to hit tab. And that will give me the entire mass. And then I'll select it, so now I have that whole thing selected. And I go down to the bottom here, the bottom right, or bottom left hand side of the screen, and click my temporary hide and isolate button, which are some, some sunglasses down here. And then go to hide element. You could also isolate the element if I wanted to. It'll just show that one. But uh, I said you would do that. But the quick way to do it is just to select it and hit your shortcut. I believe it's HR, and then it'll it'll hide it for you. But uh, but if, if the shortcuts aren't working, then you just want to go to your glasses at the bottom. But the way you don't want to do it, one thing about hiding, is you don't want to. Uh, select it and then right click and then go to hide which I guess that doesn't work in uh, 3D massing that's only in a uh, actual project but in an actual project if you were to right click and say hide in view it's completely different than the hiding it here with the glasses because this is a temporary hide and the right click hide is a is a permanent hide if you're in an actual project, but I guess they don't, they don't let you permanently hide it in, in 3D massing. That's only an actual project, so I guess disregard that for now, but when you're in an actual project, try not to right-click and hide things. Just use the glasses at the bottom. 
All right, so this is looking, I guess, more interesting. <laughs> Let me bring this back a little bit. Where it sort of stops right in here. And then we'll just take this edge here, stretch that out a little bit. And we'll just take this edge here and bring it up. So. Let's bring it down some. Exactly. We'll probably just sit this right out in front of the high museum. Just there you go. Done. Beautiful. All right. So anyway, let's get keep moving here. All right. So once you have your mask, <laughs> once you have your mask, let's go ahead and go into actually dividing one of these services. Let's say we've we've figured out what we wanted. We have our heights and everything. Let's go ahead and select this face here as to divide the surface of. So remember to divide a surface, we just select a face. So I'm going to select this front face here. And then we go to our divide surface command at the top of the screen. Divide surface. And it defaults to the no pattern type, which is to our left here. But what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a custom uh, rectangle pattern, which we scroll down here you see the rectangle here, which is actually just a, a solid rectangles. But we're going to make a custom one with glass in it and a frame around it to sort of place inside here. So in order to do that, we have to first open up a new family. Because the components that go inside of these cut surfaces or divided surfaces are custom families. So in order to do that, we're going to have to go to File, New, our, the big R button, top left of the screen. We're going to say New Family. We're going to click that. It's going to bring up all the different types of families that you could create. We're not going to go into all these. We're actually going to go into some of these other ones in, in later sessions. But what we're going to go to is the Curtain Panel Pattern Based, which is, it should be on your second row. Curtain Panel Pattern Based. We don't want to go to this one. We want to go to Curtain Panel Pattern Based. And then we're going to say open. All right, so you can see this this interface looks similar to uh, the interface we were just in, but here you see it has sort of a a grid down here at the bottom, and that grid represents the type of pattern you're trying to create. So if I select that grid, you see to my left that it displays a rectangle. That's because this is the type of panel that would fit inside of a rectangle pattern. Now, if we wanted to do a custom pattern for a different shape, we would have to select this 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 grid at the bottom first, and then change that to any type of one you wanted to create, say an octagon or you know triangles, whatever you want to create. But today we're just going to do a rectangle, so we're going to stay on that one. All right. So once we're in here, we're going to use some of the same tools we learned earlier, like the sweep tool and the extrusion tool, to sort of create a glass panel here. So the first thing we're going to do is create a glass piece to go inside the center here. Now there's quick ways of doing this. What we're going to do is choose this outline shape here. If I just hover over one of these lines, it'll select this whole uh, shape here. So we're just going to select it. And these points here represent you know, the corners of that rectangular pattern. So you don't want to really go outside of this or it's going to be overlap between your different panels. You want to stay sort of within these boundaries. All right, so if we select that, and we actually just say create form, it'll create a form off of those already drawn lines for us. So if I go to create form, it's going to ask me do I want to do an extrusion or a flat panel. And all, all we want is just a clear sheet of glass. So let's just select the second option, which is just a flat plane, not an extrusion. I'm going to select that. And bam, it places that plane in there. And this plane is defined by these four lines out here which is why we chose those lines to create it instead of just creating a, our own custom rectangle. If we were to create our own sort of rectangle, it wouldn't be sort of confined by these limits, which means it won't morph and change as the actual panels change in the actual uh, conceptual mass divided surface. So it's very important to stay inside these bounds and lock things to these planes and use these sort of already drawn lines to sort of establish most of your geometry if you want things to actually work for you. Now how I got to this interface here was we just 
we're in this face here, in this uh, interface here, but what we want to do is just go to the R button and say open. Not open, sorry. <laughs> new. We're going to do a new family because those components are families inside of those rectangles. We're going to say new family and then we're going to go to curtain panel pattern based. Make sure you go to this one because all the other ones will not work. It has to be this one. And then just say open. I'm not going to open it again because I already have it open, but let's see if I can get back to that screen. All right, so once you're here, then you'll see this sort of basic interface. Um, okay, so we made that panel right here in the center just by selecting those lines and then saying create form. Very simple. And now we're actually going to select that panel just by clicking it, and it should turn blue when we have it selected. If we wanted to, we could extrude it up and turn it into an extrusion. It's not what we want to do, but if you wanted to, you could. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to select that. And now we're actually going to change the properties of this to actually have a material on it. This is a little bit about sort of how you create some of you know, these more advanced families with materials and, and parameters all on them. But we're just going to do a simple material that just stays the same. It's not going to change or anything. So we're just going to select that panel. Our far left will see material under the properties dialog and where it says by category. We're going to click right here in the corner of it. Not this button, but right beside it. The button pops up once you click it, which is kind of funny, but <laughs> you never know there's a button there. But we're going to click this, not this little button here, because that's a different property box. All right, so once that's open, you'll see this dialog come up, your materials dialog box. You'll see it has a few materials. Typically, when you're in sort of this massing interface, it doesn't come with any materials. You'd have to sort of create those yourself. And we'll go into that in later sessions. But the material we do need is already here, which is glass. So we can just select that one. And we can say OK. Now if I click off of it, you'll see it's a little transparent because now it's, it's sort of a glass material. If I select it, you'll see to the left that it's now glass. All right, so now we have our glass centerpiece done and modeled. Very simple. Now what, now what we're going to do is we're going to hide this glass piece because what, what we're going to do next is a sweep and we don't want that sweep to sort of be hosted by this glass piece. We want the sweep to be hosted by these, these lines out here. And if we don't hide this, it'll try to snap to this instead of, the, instead of this outlining frame. So I'm going to select this pane and the same thing we did before is use those glasses at the bottom of the screen and hit hide element. Now that it's gone, we can go ahead and start to sweep a profile around this. Now, if you remember how we did uh, sweeps before, we had to first place a reference point on one of these lines so that we can draw a custom profile on that new reference point. So what I'm going to do is go to my top left up here and choose the reference point, which is a small dot in the corner here. I'm going to click that, and then I'm just going to drag and place it on one of these lines. Not at the corners, but at one of the lines. And just click on it. Now we have a point that's hosted by these green sort of um, controlling lines. So I'm going to just hit escape to go back to modify. Now I'm going to select that new uh, reference point we just placed on there. You'll see it shows the new reference plane that I want to draw on. Now that we have that, I'm just going to do a simple uh, circle. Uh, sweep. You can do any shape you want to, but I'm just going to do a circle here. And then I'm going to snap on the center from this, do a center, and then I'm going to drag it to the size I want. Let's just do one foot. So I can just type in one if I want to and hit enter. And now that we've drawn that profile, I hit escape to get out of all, all that. I'm going to select the profile and then I'm going to select this frame. Using, holding down the control key to select more than one option. Now I have both those selected and I'm just going to say create form. Alright, so there is our frame around the window and now if I go down to my glasses again and say reset temporary hide and isolate, you'll see the glass pane go inside of there as well. So now we can sort of just rotate around this and just see how it looks. It's sort of symmetrical. Now we have a custom uh, panel to place inside there. So what it's going to do is just repeat this same pattern throughout all of the rectangles that are on that divided surface. 
So, all right, now that that's done, we're just going to say save as. So we go to the big R to the top left. We're going to go to save as. And then saves the current family. So let's go to save family. I'm just going to save it to my desktop and call it rectangle, pa rectangle panel. Save that to desktop. Now that we have it saved, I'm just going to go to the top of the screen here and just say load into project. And this should bring it into our other family that we have open. All right, now it should be in here. You can't see it or anything until you apply it to the surface. So let's go to our 3D view. I think it actually looks kind of cool if you get the right angle. Uh, <laughs> so it's like that surface, that divided surface we have. And then for the type, instead of the rectangle, we're going to use the new panel we just imported. And you'll see it under the rectangle category called rectangle panel, which is what I called it. And I'll just select that. And it should place those inside of the pattern instead of the other uh, rectangle I had. So if I click off of it, that's kind of funny. <laughs> uh, see, it's kind of fat. <laughs> but it places them all throughout the pattern. So if I wanted to, I could go back to that family and change the size of that um, sweep so it won't be so fat, I guess. Let's see that. But before we do that, let's actually change the spacing on this so we can see how it changes. So if I select this divided surface and look to the top here, you'll see your U grid and your V grid, which we explained last time is your, your horizontal and your vertical. Instead of being 12 by 12, let's try 6 by 6. So I'm just going to type in 6 and 6. And it should change. And, and it matches the shape of whatever pattern you put in there. So let me change this to let me do 3. There we go. So I'm going to do 3 and 6 spacing. And now you can see it sort of divides that surface up and gives you sort of a framework for almost a emollient system with some glass in there. It's kind of hard to see the glass because it's like a transparent um, white, but it is there. Now let's go back and actually uh, change that the width of those uh, that sweep so it won't be so fat. Alright, so if I just, I can hit Control Tab just to, to open that family back up because it's still open. If I keep hitting Control Tab, that cycles through your windows. Control plus Tab. So if I keep hitting it, I can cycle back to the family I was just at. In case you, in case you close this whole project out, you can easily open it just by going to Open Family, and then opening that family we just saved to our desktop as if you saved it. And just say Open. And then we can edit it here. If I select this and I say edit profile, so select your sweep, then go to edit profile. It'll bring up that profile again, and then we can sort of select the shape of it, and then we can change it from one foot to say six inches. And then go to the check mark up here, and then it'll change the size of that until something a little bit smaller. I think that should be fine. Then I can just say load into project again at the top here. And it's going to ask you, do you want to overwrite the existing version? And yes. And now let's go back to our 3D view. And as you can see, they should be a, they're a lot smaller now. So that's essentially how you create, you know, a custom panel. Of course, we could always create different shapes of sweeps. We could, you know, not even put glass in there. We could put like patterns of brick or something. We could do whatever we wanted to, and it should adapt and change with uh, the shape of the spacing. That's as long as you made sure you locked to those lines, that profile that was already there when you when you opened that conceptual mass. All right. So, is there any questions about dividing a surface?
or creating panels before we move on here. I'll just go ahead and debug these other surfaces up, these other faces. So let me know if you have any questions before we move on. Uh, select that face and change it to rectangle panel. And let's just do different sizes here, why not? So this one will be 6 by 12, sure. And then this face will say divide surface. We'll say there's a rectangle pattern. pattern. Alright, and let's change that to like three and nine. Why not? And now you have some interesting faces on your <laughs> on your mask. Alright, so since there's no questions, let's just keep moving on here. Now once we have sort of our mask sort of decided and we sort of I think it looks good. Let me change these faces to something so they look a little more transparent. But once you have, you know, sort of what you're looking for, you can bring that into an actual project in Revit. But before you can actually bring it into a project, you have to uh, start a project. So let me go ahead and go to, to file, open, or new. Actually, there's no file, it's the Revit button, the R, whatever that means. The R button, and we're going to say new, then we're going to say project. That was a question about the divisions and how they came out so even. Uh, they're always going to be even if it's a rectangle sort of pattern. It evenly spaces whatever sizes you put in here. Um, so, so the program does it sort of automatically, and then it morphs the panel you created to fit inside those inside that grid. So, I don't know if that answers your question, but I mean, there's also additional options here in your left side. There's actually a lot of properties that you can play with with that panel. You could flip it upside down if it was the wrong way. Uh, if I stretch this out some, so you can see, you can mirror the panel. Of course, these are symmetrical on all sides, so it's probably going to be right every time. But if you did create something that was a little lopsided, like one side was bigger than the other, then if it was on the wrong way, you could flip it here, or you could mirror it. You could also rotate it. Um, you could rotate the whole grid. Let's say we wanted to make it 15 degrees instead of, you know, zero zero. Let's put in 15. Hit apply. It'll rotate just that grid. So there's really a lot of options you can play with you know, after you've created it, which we'll start to get a, a little bit more advanced. You can offset it a little bit if you wanted to. Maybe it's too close. Offset it about three feet. It'll bring it back some. So there's some different things you can do uh, with it after it's already created. You can also tell it how to create the border the, the uh, border tiles. So if it cuts it off here, as you see in the pattern here, instead of it doing partial, I could say do empty. And it would just take out that whole panel that doesn't fit in right and just give you full panels inside. Or you could also do something like overhanging and it will just overhang the edge if they don't fit exactly right. Um, so there's a lot of things that that we could get into later if you guys wanted you know, more in-depth study on these. We could do like some different shape panels and add some different parameters to them, some more advanced stuff. Make it to where you can change the sizes of each panel depending on, you know, their height or, or, or depending on the width or the angle they're at. A bunch of, you know, a lot more complex stuff that, that, that we might get a little into when we start to go over uh, families later in, in the develop phase. But today I just wanted to give you just a quick introduction to how to just create a, a, a generic panel and hopefully y'all can go home, you know, tonight and, and play with it and, and then uh, come back with some questions. But, um, so yeah, you could, you know, it, but it does, I distribute it pretty evenly. 
you could even do maximum spacing versus minimum and it'll just space them out evenly to fit in you know three feet or something versus just uh, a perfect you know distance but uh I mean, it's a bunch of different options there, but we'll, we can get into that later if you guys want to. Uh, but anyway, so once you have that done, and you want to bring it into that project. We're just going to go ahead and open up a new project. So new project. Uh, it's going to ask me to save it. Uh, no, doesn't really matter. And okay, a generic project. Yes. Okay. All right, and now you see you're just in your basic interface for a generic project. Well, what we're going to do here is we're going to actually go back to our other screen. A couple ways to do this. I can minimize this here. It'll show me all my views. And like just sort of cycle through them here. It can kind of get confusing. But if you want, you can minimize them so as you can see all of them. Or you can just minimize it all the way to the bottom. Or you can just hit the control tab, which is what I've been using to cycle through my views. So I can keep hitting control tab and go to this one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say load into project. The same way we should have brought the panel in, into this interface, we do the same thing to get it into a project. So there's our 3D mask, we just say load into project. It's going to ask you which project. And uh, we want project one, not the actual rectangle panel. So project one, let's say okay. And this is just telling you that you can't see masses in Revit unless you turn on the show masses because it's not really a massing. It's really for actual built, you know, walls, floors, actual concrete things. So masses are just, you know, references. So they, they're typically turned off unless you, you bring one in or you place a mass. Then it'll ask you, do you want to turn on masses? And it's, yes, of course. I do want to see what I just brought in. So you just hit OK. Right here's just letting you know. So close. Yes, do that. And now, Right now, you see the little circle with the slash down the center of it. It's saying I can't place it, so if I try to click, it's it can't find an appropriate host. And this happens sometimes. What you have to tell it to do is not be. If you look at the top here, you see placement. It's trying to place it on a face, but since I have no floors or, or anything in this project, there's no face to really place it on. So I'm going to say just place it on a work plane. And here, the work plane will be, of course, level one. You know. So now I can place it in, you'll see it here. I can hit the space bar, and it'll rotate it uh, 90 degrees. Or I can select to say rotate after placement in the top left here on my uh, tools options bar. So I'm just gonna place it in. Uh, I believe north is up, so let me face these windows north. Just place it in here. And it's gonna keep trying to place them so make sure you hit escape once you're done placing one especially if it's a large mass and you place it and you're like still clicking stuff it's going to take forever trying to load like 20 masses that you just placed just click once you know wait for it to to show it and then hit escape because it has been placed don't keep placing it because it sees it as like sort of a, a family so it wants to keep placing them until you say done so I'm just going to hit escape Let's say I'm finished importing it now if I go to my I'm going to my 3D view I can see sort of that mass that is brought in. And here it's all translucent because there's no real uh, materials added or anything of that nature. So what it shows is just your basic massing. And then you will use this massing to start creating actual walls and, and floors and things of that nature. Which we will go into in next class. So, so now you have your mass. I'm just going to do a quick 3D view so we can see how it looks. So I'm going to go back to my level one floor plan. And then if you go to your views tab at the top, you'll see view. Then hit view. We're going to go to 3D view. Click that down and go to camera. And this will give you a perspective view at five foot six inches, which is the default and perspective is checked. So you can change that to not perspective or, or a different height or a different level depending on what you're looking for but this should work for us. And now I'm just going to place this camera out here looking towards the building I suppose here-ish. 
<laughs> yes. Five foot six six is like the average height, so some people say it's short, but that is the average height. And I'm definitely below that. So I'm gonna click the camera and drag it. And I can sort of see a perspective view of that building. Which isn't as interesting as I wanted it to look. <laughs> but uh this is better than nothing. And I can actually select it and click and, and hit my shift and, and middle mouse button to actually orbit around it in perspective to get a little bit better view. So, so now, but typically what you want to do is, is do sort of a multitude of masses while you're still in your massing environment. One thing we try to stress is duplication, because it's hard to show, you know, process in the computer, because you just keep manipulating the same element, and all you really see is the finished product. So, as you can see in the PowerPoint, I have there's there's a few images of sort of multiple masses, where what what I would do is, you know, create one here, and while I'm still in this conceptual massing environment, I'll select all these elements and then I'll copy it before I do too many changes just with the CC command or copy command at the top here where's copy there it is copy and then I'll just click and drag another copy out of here I'll typically do like a few of these like two or three and then I'll take those and slowly change each one instead of changing the initial one I'll create a few copies and then I'll say maybe this wall is farther out maybe this one is lower and as you can see the divided surface still follows the sort of the shape of the mass maybe I want to bring this one out so you want to make this shorter things like that and then I'll keep that one and then I'll go to the next one and, and change some things over here so it's important to sort of duplicate 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 so that you have sort of that process it also makes a good graphic on your boards when you're done when you have like 20 different you know models showing the progression from you know just a simple block maybe to to you know a complex skyscraper you know so even when you're playing with sort of these fenestrations, it's good to always create a duplicate, you know, mass. And then change the surface to something else and sort of compare and contrast. Or even bring all these in to the project and then play around with them there. So that's always, so always keep that in mind. Uh, so, I think that's pretty much what we're going to cover today. Uh, sorry to last longer. I mean, if you guys want to do anything else, we can uh, even adjust these masses some more. We can do some different divided surfaces. We can uh, we can show you how to import some some different things, export some different things. I'm trying not to get into actually applying walls and floors and things like that to these masses inside the actual project yet, because we're going to go into that next class. But. Uh, so is there anything else you guys want to know or was there any questions or how do you move a mass? You gotta be careful when you're moving masses because if you don't actually select the entire mass, then, then you'll just like move a face or something when you're trying to drag it. Which isn't what you want to do. What you have to do is make sure you select the entire thing. So let's say you want this entire mass. You gotta still use that same tab key that I keep, you know repeating over and over again to tab until you get the entire element. When you select something, you see in the bottom left hand of the screen, it'll say exactly what you have selected. So it says like form element right now. If I hit tab again, it'll say form element surface. So that tells you you have a surface. Now I have the element. In case you can't see if you're, if you're really selecting all of it. Or if I wanted to get a point, so now it says vertex. Or you keep tabbing, it'll say element, edge. So that helps you know exactly what you're selecting. And, and what you want to get is the entire element. So if I say entire element and then select it, now I can move that whole mass and not have to worry about moving the wrong thing. So, And then of course, you can move that more accurately by 
I'll just go to like a top view here and I'll go to the move command. So you select the element, not just the face, and then you go to the move command right here. It's like that, and then you can say from this point to this point, six to four feet away, and it'll move it you know, a lot more accurately. It's also a question about trying to apply a family window tile thingy to a curved surface. Um, I don't know what the problem is, but let me try to do one up real quick right here and we can look at it. Just going to create a quick curved surface here. Um, if what you're trying to do is too crazy, it may give you errors. But if it's just what type of uh, surface are you trying to apply to it? So I'll just select this face here and I'll say divide surface. Let's say I wanted to do that new rectangle panel we just made. It seems to fit in perfectly fine, but so you say it keeps giving you errors. What are the errors saying? And how crazy is it? If it's sort of a I mean depending on how crazy curved the surface is. Um, it may not work. I mean, if it's just too crazy, I mean, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> it's just when you get to that point, you'll understand. <laughs> yeah, bending in three dimensions might be a problem. Let me see if I can. create something that does something like that. I'm, I'm pretty sure this will work fine, so I don't really know what you're doing. That's but I mean, if it's if if it doesn't look like it makes sense, then it, then I probably can't figure it out either. So <laughs> uh, if it doesn't halfway make sense, it probably won't be able to create it. Oops. It takes a little longer. It's a little more complex. Um, Just tell me what that um what that air what that error says, uh, Jonathan, and we'll look at it. Let me see if I can make something twisted and try to put a surface on that because people are saying it's just not working for them. We create this form. We rotate this face. So say so yeah, something like this. I guess is what you're trying to say. Like this face here. I mean, it really depends. Uh, typically, if it's like a really small element and you trying to do a crazy complex twist on it, it's going to be hard for it to try and figure out how to make that work right. But if it's a large, you know, mass, then it should be able to do whatever you ask it to do. But if it's a really small, you know, in case you do it way too small of a scale and you try to twist it in four, in four different directions, it probably won't work. But if it's like a, a skyscraper, then you can figure it out. But if it's like a really small face that you're trying to, you know, to do that with, it probably won't work. I don't, I don't know what size you're, you're working with, but that might be why it didn't work. I mean, we can still keep playing with this, like we can maybe choose this, this here and then bring it in some more. I mean, there's a certain point where it'll just say, no, I can't do it, but but that's typically when you have like a really small shape and you're trying to curve it crazy amounts, like crazy amounts of twists. Like if I really twisted this, you know, too much, it probably won't work anymore, but, but, uh, It'll take a little bit longer, the more crazier it gets. But I mean, 
But if I made this a lot smaller, I might not be able to do it. Let's see, if I went way down here and tried to do it. Also, sometimes it depends on the amount of divisions. So if you have like 100 uh, divisions, it may not work versus 10 divisions. Or something like that. So let's say I have 5 and 5. Especially these panels. If you made a custom panel for it, depending on the amount of divisions, it might not even look right. So that could also be part of the problem. You have to send me a screenshot or something. I'll see if I can what I can do. Let's say we have 25 there, 25 there. Yeah, just once you get to a certain amount, it just takes forever to to see what it looks like, but. But uh, there's also a question about the uh, project interface and bringing a mass into there. So let me switch back there. Well, that's loading, I guess. It doesn't crash on me. Wait for it. What was the question about the uh, project interface? Switch back to my project using Control Tab. All right, so a question about views and creating a 3D view. What about it? Okay, so when you do a 3D view, it's not really made for you to orbit inside of that view. I mean, you can, but you're not technically supposed to be. There's other ways of making sure that the view is right. Uh, but what you can do is, if you select the element first, it'll orbit around that element. So you have to select it first and then orbit. And it shouldn't get too crazy. But if you don't select it first, it'll sort of orbit, you know, randomly around the center point, which could be a mile away. And so now you can't really see the project anymore. So always be sure to select it first and then orbit. Same thing in, in 3D views. Whatever you select, it orbits around that element. So, so you have a huge project, don't just orbit. You want to select the element you're, you're looking at first and then orbit around it. That's one thing to keep in mind. Um, but so that's the 3D view. But also if you wanted to sort of edit where it was, what you could also do is right click on the 3D view under your project browser and you can say show the camera and it will show you where that camera is on the level 1 floor plan then you can just move and drag it to where you want to but but we can get into that more you know in later classes I'm really just trying to get you guys to understand how to bring it in here and how to sort of morph and adjust it inside the exceptional massing so so that seems to be working. I don't know what you're doing, what you're doing, uh, John. Uh, let me rotate it some more. Well, let me delete this first because it's going to take forever to look at. I mean, maybe if you're trying to do this face, it might not work. <laughs> But then it also depends on the size of the panel. If the panel is smaller, you might be able to pull it off. But if it's a larger panel, it probably won't be able to work inside that, that crazy twist there. But let's see what we got here. Let me change my divisions to less so it doesn't take as long. And let me change it to rectangle panel. Oh, it'll probably still work because this is a pretty basic uh, panel with that, that we put in here. So it can kind of do whatever it wants to. but. But typically, if you had more of a complex panel, it probably wouldn't work in this, on that face. There are some limits to what you can do, but... Yeah. Seems to be working fine, so... So, uh, if there's not any more questions, uh, I think that wraps up this one. Trying to think if there's more stuff we could talk about, but 
I think we're done, so. Is there a way to copy, like, and sketch up? Uh, I don't know what you mean by that. I'm not the, I'm not the best sketch up guru. Oh wait, I know, I know in, yeah, I know in sketch up to copy you have to, like, click move and then hold down C or, I hate copying. Oh, so, oh, you mean array. Yes, there is an array tool. So let's say you wanted 20 copies of something. Um, I guess we haven't technically gone over all the modify tools, but that's up here as well, the array tool. Let me see if we can do that. Let's go to like a top view. And let's say we wanted to array this mass. You can select it. Well, let me array that. Maybe not. Probably won't let me array a mass. Yeah. I know I can array elements while I'm in a project, but I suppose it won't let me array a mass itself. <sighs> Wait a minute. I think I have to be in plan to array stuff. Oh, can't do it. For some reason not allowing me to array. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Can't array. I guess they don't allow you to array in uh, in the conceptual massing. You can do a copy multiple, which. It's not as cool, but, <laughs> but you can click multiple and you can just keep clicking, but yeah, it's not going to let you array. Typically when you're trying to array, it's like say you were trying to array a beam object. You're not trying to get into that much detail in a conceptual massing environment. You don't do all your mass like you don't do all your stuff in here like like you would in SketchUp. In SketchUp you would make all the beams here, you make all the curtain systems, you would you would put in all the floors, you'd put in the walls. You don't do that in Rivet. All you would do here is just create sort of a, a simple mass and then bring that into a project and then start to do those kind of things. And typically if you're trying to say like make like a curtain system or beams, it has a tool for that. So you would say beams or you would say curtain system. So if you want it, you know, to array a curtain system, you would just use a face and then tell it to be this far away and, and be this shape kind of thing. Which I guess is why they don't allow you to array inside of the conceptual massing. So, yeah, it's not really meant for you to go into that type of detail, I believe. So maybe that's why it won't allow me to array it. I'm not sure about that, though. 